Now, if we go ahead with our rack setup and hit apply, it's going to apply right now to this entire file. However, again, there's a better way to do some of this, and that's through the use of presets and batch processing. So now that I have the effects set for this particular narrator, say I've got like a hundred of these little videos, I can easily go through and if it's the same narrator recorded in the same environment with the same equipment, I can create a preset that's going to effectively process every one of those files in a batch. So you'll notice right now, presets is set to custom because I've made a custom effects rack here. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and save effects rack as a preset. So here I can name it narration since she's talking about adobe spark let's go ahead and do narration adobe spark and i'll hit okay all right so we can see this is now a preset that i can select from a drop down with a bunch of different existing presets of course you can always test out some of these other presets if you want to against your particular audio but there's a custom one for us and i also want to save the current effects rack as a favorite. So again, I can call this something else, maybe narrative batching and hit okay. All right. Now we don't see the batch panel right away, but if I go up to window and let's find batch process. So let's choose that. And here's our batch process window. I can actually close out this MOV file. And note, of course, if I go ahead and save this, what's going to happen is it's going to ask me to save this as a separate audio file because it can't save this audio track back inside of the original MOV. It'll just be a separate audio file itself that we can use as the audio track for this video file if we're dealing with video in a case like this. So I'm going to call it Adobe Spark.Wave, and I'm going to save it to my project. This is all just great. I'm going to hit OK. So let's close everything out here. I don't want any of this stuff open. Close all. Save changes. No, I don't want to save any changes. No to all. Perfect. All right. So let's say what's happened is we've gone through and we've actually gotten a bunch of these different recordings from our narrator around a bunch of stuff. And we've clicked through and we've removed any of the little coughs and sneezes and you know other kind of weird things that we don't want in the file, but we haven't processed the file fully yet with our effects rack. So what we can do is from our favorites right here, of course, if you recall, I saved that favorite as called narrative batching. Now that I've got that, I can choose it, and it tells me to drag and drop supported media files here. So if I look inside of my project, here's the original MOV file, but that's not what we want. We want the WAV file that was just exported. So let's go ahead and drag that directly into our batch process panel, and then it shows up right here. Of course, this being a batch process, I could put 100, 200 of these in here and they would all run together. They get queued up and processed until they're all finished. So it's gonna apply our narrative batching favorite to it and it's gonna export this. Now, I would highly suggest that you choose export settings to make some decisions around how you want this file to be named and uh, what format you want it in. So you can add a prefix here if you want, or a postfix. So like you could name it as a postfix, maybe underscore B for having been batched. That's up to you. Uh, you can save it in a specific location or the same as the source file location. And you can choose to overwrite existing files or not. This one's pretty important as you can imagine. But since we're putting a postfix on here and a prefix would work the same way, this actually doesn't really matter because 
it's going to be named completely different. The format, I want to keep it as a wave, but you could, of course, use MP3 compression on this if you wanted to, or anything else. We can choose to remove files upon completion, to close them upon completion, or to include markers and other metadata. So this is fine. I just want to make sure about these things, just so I don't overwrite anything. And I can tell which files are actually the ones that have been batch processed. So let's hit OK. And now the only other thing to do is to hit Run. There we go. That was pretty fast. So you can see we've got an output of Adobe Spark underscore B dot wave. And it has been completed. It's done. And it gives us more information about this. So note it also opens it up inside of our files panel here. And if I double click, we can see the finished file. So let's go ahead and play some of this to make sure that everything was batched correctly. Make sure you are logged in. Perfect. We can see the low then parts. Create There's nothing. And the voice Choose is nice type and bright. You are ready to go. Now that we've configured this preset as a favorite, we can use batch process whenever we want to just drag files in there and just process them in exactly this same way.